Hello guys and girls, Bashful Brit here bringing you yet another Thorncraft 4.2 tutorial. Uh, today in this episode we're going to be covering some golems. Um, I know I haven't done golems before in the tutorial series so I thought I'm just going to spend the next couple of episodes going over them. Some things have changed in the 4.2 update, there's been a couple new cores added and stuff like that. So I just want, and there's some new items as you can see behind me been added. So I want to cover all of these for you guys and get you guys up to speed with golems because they're one of the most useful things within Thorncraft. There's a hole in my ceiling. Place that back up. Chuck you away. Cool. Uh, so as you can see from here, the last since the last episode, I've made ourselves a nice humble abode sort of thing kind of. Uh, this is all from the node node work. Uh, I'm going to quickly show you guys something which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I'm just quickly going to... I should have been more prepared than this. I'm um, going to grab ourselves some metallum and we need to grab ourselves some auto as well. Cool! And the last thing we need is some iron ore. You guys will see why I'm doing this in a minute. There we go, awesome. So, if we're just going to quickly cover the alchemical furnace and the transferring of um, nodes, uh, the use of the nodes and the vis relays. Uh, basically, what I've got set up here is some ghetto little uh, thing going. Ignore the redstone. Um, basically, what we have is we've got a furnace going here. Uh, we've got an alchemical construct. This is an automated alchemical construct. I'm going to cover that more in a minute. Uh, but this is something I was working on since the last episode. Uh, if we have a look in here, we can make native iron clusters. These things need these. You can auto feed these in. I, can, I think you can auto feed them from any side. But if we chuck a load of metallum in here and a load of auto in there you will see it will start spitting out nugget uh, clusters sorry clusters give you the chance of getting nuggets and double ores and stuff like that as you can see and it's spitting double ingots out and it will also give you nuggets uh, this process is sped up greatly by this as you can see it's going orange because it's pulling um, Ignis from the thing that we have over here and as you can see set up over here we've got a load of um, channels different color channels for different color things so I've got one with terror in it one with aqua um, air ignis auto and Patricio. and it's basically all running this way the only one it's pulling is along the red channel which is pulling out the ignis and feeding it into this which speeds up the process greatly and basically you can automate a system like this. You can have a furnace going with things cooking up, giving you metallum and auto. And just have a hungry chest taking everything in. We've got the arcane bellows. You can see this is a really fast, efficient way to process your ores just using Thorncraft. Um, so this is something that I was playing with in the last episode. Uh, after the last episode, sorry. And we've come up with this. So I just thought I'd quickly show that off to you guys. Uh, give you guys sort of an idea or give you guys some I don't know some inspiration to come up with some really cool features using all the vis relays and stuff in 4.2 So with that said, let's jump into Golomancy. We've covered that little bit there that I wanted to show you um, Golomancy, this is everything we're going to need for Golomancy uh, the first thing you're going to need is a Golomancer's Bell. I didn't actually set up a crafting table to show you guys how to make this. So we'll pop this one in here. It's quite simple to do this one. It's basically just a stick with nether quartz like that. So if we grab ourselves, I think you can use... Let's just quickly grab some bits and pieces. I'll show you guys how this is made. So we've got a stick and we want some quartz. Where are you? One, two, three, four. So one there and then a little square of it there. It's going to require five auto uh, if you've got a discount on your wand. 
it will take it down a little bit and there you go we have a golemancer's bell which is what you basically need to manage your golems uh, so that's one of the most important tools in golemancy um, we've also got all these accessory things which we're going to cover in another episode uh, but for today all we're going to cover is how to make all the different kinds of golems as you can see here, there's eight different types of blocks, which means there are eight different types of golems that we can have in the game. Each of them have their disadvantages and advantages. Um, as far as I'm aware, none of these have changed within the 4.2 update, but I'm going to cover them anyway, as this is going to be a complete guide on Golemancy and just sort of things you can do with them and how to create everything. So two new blocks here that you probably don't know about is the tallow block and the block of flesh. The tallow block is made with magic tallow and magic tallow itself is pretty simple to make. It's done in alchemy in the furnace. It's basically precantatio and rotten flesh and that will give you one magic tallow. You need nine of these to make a block of it and this is used to make a tallow golem. The other one is a block of flesh. This is nine zombie flesh like this, and it will give you a block of flesh. Simple enough. The other one we have is a thormium block, which is thormium ingots in a block. Pretty simple. Nothing too fancy there. Uh, it's basically iron with precantatio in a crucible. So now we've got all of that covered, and there's going to be a couple more things you're going to need um, to have any sort of function with your golems whatsoever. Let's just put all of this into our actual inventory. Uh, so you're going to need a blank animation core. You're going to need quite a few of these. Uh, so get crafting on these. Uh, they're not too bad at all to make. Let's go quickly grab our one because we're going to need that in a moment. Um, so where are we? Blank animation cores. They're basically four bricks and nitor in the middle. It's going to take five ignis and five auto from your wand. So they're not too bad to make at all. You're going to make quite a few of them. Uh, Nitor is pretty simple to make as well. I've covered it before. It's basically just wood with ignis and potentia into a crucible. Um, as far as crucibles go, I'm going to show you how to automate them in a minute. And the golem fetter we're going to cover in another episode. So coming over to here, what we have here is a... Let's quickly grab this one out. We have a crucible here. Uh, with your standard heat source underneath the bottom, you can have netherrack set on fire, you can have lava, or you can just put nitor down there. Nitor is one of my favorite because it doesn't set anything else on fire, and I like to use wood quite a bit. It's not dangerous whatsoever, it's, fa it's magnificent. So you're going to need to create one of them. I'd say create one of them before you do anything else. You're going to have to use lava to create your first one or fire. And then after that use nitor because it's just so much cleaner and simpler. So we have that bubbling away with our water in here. And we have these two alchemical constructs which I believe I've covered it in another episode as well. Once again just check in your thought Thomonomicon. It's pretty simple to make these things. Um, so moving on from that uh, the way to make this into an automated system is you stick two of these on top of each other like so and you right click it with a wand this will take up some it will take up some of the this from the wand it's going to take 30 orzo 30 aqua and 15 ignis this thing however is absolutely fantastic it's one of the best things i've ever used it's helped me so much in automation and stuff like that so i'm going to quickly show you guys how to use it um we're going to be using these here there's also these matrixes and i'm going to show you a little bit about them as well but what we're going to do is we're going to place down all of our essentia like so and we also need some essentia tubes this essentially a resonator is good as well just to sort of there you are and now we've got everything connected up um, these matrixes I've never used them before um, but I was going through a couple of things and I found out um, that you can put these on the side and these will 
Essentially, remember another thing. Apparently, every one increases it by two or something. But we're not going to go into them today. I'm going to cover them in another episode and look more in depth to it. Uh, but for any sort of golem, right? So any sort of golem making, sorry. Uh, hang on, let me just quickly cover this. So basically, alchemical construct is just going to be like a crucible where you can manage the essentia in jars and stuff. So if you've got your alchemical furnace and you're breaking down your essentia and putting them into jars and vials and whatnot, you can use this to automate um, or to manage your alchemy a little bit better. It's going to stop any flux. It'll only put in the things that you need, which is pretty cool. Uh, so going on to golems now. Every single golem that you're going to make is going to require these um, three aspects. So we've got Humanus, Motus, and Spiritus. So we've got Humanus here, we've got some Spiritus here, and we've got some Motus here. Every single one of them requires the exact same. Some of them require four, the, some of the others require eight the further up you go. As you can see, these things all have attributes as well, and we're going to cover them a little bit more in a minute. Uh, but let's get into this one now. Uh, we're going to create our first golem. So the very basic one, the very first one that you're going to unlock is the straw golem. So if we look at this one, uh, it tells you all about golem answers bell, golem cores, uh, discover the secret of creating golem workers. Uh, so this is the very first one you can create. It's basically a hay bale inside of a crucible. We're going to put in the alchemical thing here and I'll show you how this works. Um, straw golem attributes. They all have different attributes, so they all have their pros and cons. Um, the straw golems are very low durability and very low strength. Um, their self-repair is average. They can carry a limit of one thing at a time, so it's not like a single stack, but they can only carry one item at a time. They're very fast, and they can only hold one upgrade inside of them. And We're going to get into the upgrades a little bit further on. So that's the very first one that we're going to make. So if we just pop a bit of that in there. This is the wonderful thing about it. If you pop it in there, it'll also show you what you need. All you have to do is click on that and it will make us a straw golem, essentially. There you are. That's going now. Ah, this is the problem I've had before. Um... This is the one thing that I dislike. Right, so if we grab that one there, and we grab that one there, and we place that one there. We'll just quickly break this one here, and we stick that one there. There you go. There's our straw golem. For some reason, if you put it up, it will also it'll all get stuck in there, and it's just a horrible, horrible mess. Um, I'll show you. We'll show you another time about how to change things as you can see there's a little icon up here saying it's making straw golems so if we were to auto feed in straw it would keep making these things until it run out of straw or essentia so that's pretty cool and then you just click it to remove it and now we're going to move on to the next one which whoops okay he ate that so we're going to move on to the next one which is your wooden golems so you place a great wood log in I'm going to go over these. Uh, durability is below average, so it's not as bad as a straw golem. Its strength is still pretty low, uh, it's the same as the straw golem. Average self repair, uh, it's got a carry limit of four, so this thing can hold four things at a time. It's not going to carry four different items, it will carry four of the same item. Uh, the speed is above average, so it's quite fast, it's not as fast as the straw. But it's, it can carry more and it's got a bit better durability on it. And it as the straw, same as the straw gun, I'm sorry, it can only hold one upgrade. So if we go into here now, as you can see, we put great wood logs in here. And it's coming up saying night ore. We don't really want to make night ore. Um, because we don't have the stuff for it. We've got, we've got night ore. We don't need any at the minute. So we hit this arrow button and it will come down to any other things that you can craft with this. So here we are, wooden golem. So we just hit on that one there. It should start pulling all our sentia in fine and dandy. Just like that. And into the chest he goes. So we click on that one again and that one is gone. 
So now we're going to come over to the flesh golem. So I'm going to go through all of these ones with you and just show you how to make them in today's episode. And then the next episode we'll go through cores and what kind of things they can do. Right, so the flesh golem. Just a quick note on this one. This one is forbidden knowledge. It has moderate amount of warp on it. I've disabled warp in the configs just for the purposes of tutorials. Uh, because they do tend to get quite annoying. But this will cause warp. Um, it depends if you really want the flesh golems or not. Uh, it's completely up to you. Uh, but the durability on these are low. There's low strength on them. They have a very fast self-repair. So if these things get damaged, they will repair very fast. Um, carry limit, they can carry up to four of the same item. And speed is above average. So they're quite fast and they repair quite quickly. So it's really up to you if you want these. These things can also hold two upgrades. Like I said, upgrades will be coming in the future. It's to do with all of this stuff. So let's quickly make ourselves a flesh golem. As you can see, this one requires eight of each. So we just hit on that one there. And we should get ourselves. Do -do -do. See it draining out of here like this. Sweet. Um, so we'll clear that one out. And the next one we're going to be making is tallow. No, clay. Clay is the next one we're going to make. So this one, durability average, strength is average. Self repair is slow, carry limit of eight, and speed is average, upgrade of one. So these things are quite good all around. They're quite like mediocre sort of golems. Uh, they're not too hard to make either. It's bricks and just this stuff here. So they're not too bad at all to make. Um, they'd be quite handy. They are sort of balanced all around. Slow self repair, but the strength and durability is average. Um, and their speed is average, so they're pretty balanced. And they've got carry limit of eight, which is the highest one you, we've seen so far. So it can hold up to eight items at a time, and it only requires four of each. So that's pretty cool. So we're just going to make this fella here, and we're going to go place them all down. And you guys can sort of. Oh, don't tell me. Why have you got humanus in you? There you go. There's a better way to sort this out. I just haven't done it for the t purpose that it's just a tutorial. <laughs> I'm not going to go all out making something. So the next one we're making is a tallow golem. Let's have a look into here. So these are a little bit better than the clay golems. Uh, but they do require this magic tallow which requires a lot of crucible stuff. Making rotten flesh and pre precantatio and stuff like that. Um, but in general... Um, these are quite good. They've got average on everything. Carry limit of eight, just like the clay. And these can take two upgrades. And this one could only take one. So it's definitely a step up from your clay golems. It's going to take a little bit more work to make the tallow block. But it's not going to be too hard at all. And these do require that little bit more essentia in them. Because they are that quite a little bit better. So it's generally all around pretty good golem. Let's just hit this guy here. I hope this pulls through. Yes, it does. See, sometimes it'll block up, sometimes it won't. You can actually like filter these as well, but I didn't want to go and do that because that meant getting into it too much. Um, but cool, right, we got five golems here. So five, we got three left to cover. So we got the stone golems. Stone golems, very durable, um, but they're stone, so they're quite heavy. Oh, so this is interesting. It will always tell you a little bit about the golems here, give you a couple of like hints and stuff. So stone golems are very durable and able to carry heavy loads, but they're much slower than most other golems. Its weight allows it to sink in water, so that's pretty cool. You can probably use that for something underwater or something. I don't know, um, but yeah. So durability is above average, strength is above average, these are pretty cool. Uh, they're slow on self repair and slow on speed. It can only take one upgrade but it has quite a high carry limit as well. So these would be pretty, they're quite useful, they'd be useful as like guards and stuff if you're only on the stone sort of section of it because these do take a while to research. I'm using the cheat sheet just for demonstration purposes. 
Oh, can't look at that one. So we're going to get rid of that one. Place this guy in here. And as we're in 1.6.4, um, you can actually make cracked stone bricks using uh, Petitio. I know in 1.8 you can now make them by putting them in a furnace, but prior to that, this is a really cool way of doing it. Um, but that's just that's not here nor there, so we're going to go on to making some stone golems. Click on this bad boy. There we go. There's that one done. So, next, iron golems. Uh, extremely tough, strong, carry huge loads, and they move slow and sink in water. So, high durability, high strength, um, low self-repair, a carry limit of 32. That's by far the highest we've seen so far, and it's very slow as well. So, that, again, these are like iron... Don't confuse these with iron golems from villages, but they are quite similar. They make very, very good defense. Um, and these things can only take one upgrade in them as well. So you can only put one of these in them. There's six to choose from, which kind of sucks. But they are still pretty good for sort of defense things if you want that. Uh, so if we place that one in there and we'll get crafting on that one while he's going, I'm going to show you Thormian Golems. These are by far my favorite. They are absolutely brilliant. They have very high durability. They're high in strength. They're quite slow on self repair, but not very slow like the Iron Golem. And their speed is slow, not very slow like the Iron Golem. It sinks in water as well. Um, they are also highly resistant to magical damage. So these things are really awesome all around. Um, <clears throat> Basically, it's just higher up version of, like, the infused version of iron. And these things also get to upgrade. Uh, so we should have that one done. Yep. And now we're just going to place this one in and make our Thormium Golem. And that is the last one that we need. So we're going to chuck all this in here. Grab this one out here. And there you go. There are all of our Golems. And to make these things work as well, you also want to be binding them to a chest. I've got little little things set up here showing you a couple of things the golems can do. Uh, but we'll cover that in another episode. Actually, I might show you a couple of things we can do, show you what's coming in the next episode. But if we place this here, there you go, we've got a golem. These things will remain inactive until you give them a core, which is what we're going to cover in the next episode. And I'm going to show you what each core does, how to make the cores, and what they do. Um, so as you can see here, we can right click on this guy with a bell. And the ring here shows that he's bound to this um, storage storage block. So he's bound to this chest. So if we were to put um, a gather core in him, he would go gather stuff and he'd bring it back to this chest. Um, like some of them you don't have to link to a chest I don't think but I link all of mine to chest just because um, so we've got like a harvest one here gather one here both linked to chests um, so that's pretty cool um, so that's your stone golem there's your tallow golem to pick these things up as well just left click them with your golem out as one no shifting or anything um, you can also bind these guys if you click on him there, you can see he's bound to the floor now because I didn't click him on the chest. We click him on the chest. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, Derpin. Right. There. Right click him on the chest. Right click with the Golem Mancer's Bell to see what he's bound to. You can also path these guys with the Golem Mancer's Bell. So you can see he's bound to that. We can path him to there, path him to here, and path him to here. Um, and then you can right click to remove these paths as well. Basically, you can tell the golem where to go. If you want to set him in a path, say you had like a circuit of things and you wanted to go around and pick up, you had like a farm and it's dropping items down into a certain area and you wanted to path them around it, you can do that. Um, I've not really got too much into the path and I just set up basic things like this. I'm not too advanced on the golem stuff, but I am slowly learning. So we've got loads of stone golems because we're in creative mode and it keeps picking up the ones we're dropping. 
So let's just quickly show you guys all of the golems. Um, so we've got stone, we've got tallow, we've got clay, we've got flesh, we've got wood. Whoops. Oh, it's half and half. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> uh, which one do we pick? Like that one. So we want the wood one down there. And then thormium and that one there. So there you go. There's all eight of your different kinds of golems. They all look pretty funky. Thormium one's the one I use the most. Uh, let's quickly pick all these guys up. So that is basically how you make your golems, um, how you manage them with this wonderful bell thing. And I'm also going to quickly cover, I'm going to quickly show you a little thing that these guys do. Um, I'm going to show you how to turn them. Mm, mm. I'm going to show you how to turn them on and off as well. Why the hell not? Uh, so we've got the Golem Feta here. This has been a brand new addition to 4.2. Basically, these things are really simple to make. They're arcane stone bricks and arcane stone blocks with the redstone block in the middle and two ingots. Basically, this will stop, this will inactivate your Golem, whether it has a core in it or not. So you can see here we've got ones with cores and both of them are inactive while they're on the block. <laughs> Uh, they can be pushed off the block, which is quite an annoying fact. But still, if we pull this one here, I'll quickly show you this. This is one without an upgrade, and you can upgrade these things. I'm going to quickly show you. Um, okay, that's what we want. Right, so if we turn this guy on, he will now go around and harvest stuff. As you can see, he's not replanting anything, which isn't good because he's basically just going to harvest the entire farm and then we're going to have to come replant it ourselves. What's the point of having minions if they don't do the, the entire job for you? So this is an upgrade gem. I'm going to show you how to I'm gonna cover all these later on. Um, but you just pop that one in there and now we're going to turn him back on again and watch him go. Look at that, he's replanting things. As long as it drops the seed, he will replant it. Oh, he's gone onto that block like a dirt. As you can see, he's not collecting the items either, which is where this guy comes in. As you can see, he's bound to this chest. He will go around and collect the items. So this guy's now picking things up and planting them for us. And this guy is picking up the drops and placing them in the chest for us. Which is pretty cool. So that's one of the sort of things you can do with that. Um, another thing is this. As you can see here. These golems are quite smart. So we've taken our wheat now and we want to feed our cows as well. We want them to make babies and we want more. There you go. As you've seen, he's just walked back over there. And there's still two cows left. This is a smart golem, and it's one of my favorite cores at the minute. Um, basically, what it does... Sorry, basically what it does, it will slaughter your animals for you, but make sure there is always a breeding pair left, and it won't go and kill the babies either, as you can see here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. They're quite smart, they're really useful, there's many many things you can do for them, but I'm going to cover them all in the next episode when we go over animation cores and all of that stuff. I've got all of this to get into with it as well, but that has been it for the episode, I hope you guys have enjoyed it, I hope you guys are finding it useful, please let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions regarding golems, I will try it to my best knowledge. Um, to inform you and let you know as much as you need to know about these but that has been it from me today thank you guys for watching remember to leave a like on the video if you liked it and if you want to carry on seeing more um thornwellcraft tutorial series make sure to hit that subscribe button there's one going up like every other day so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next episode